，安俊杰。俊杰能听到我声音吗？哈喽，伊，嘿，轩，嗨，哈喽，晚安，嗨，嗨。Hi, Junjie. Can you hear me? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah. No. I was just trying to see if you have added anything in the agenda. I was taking a look at it. So. Yeah. I have a、uh, two issue for discussion. Uh, one. Yeah, one is for using verifier with the repository. Another is uh, uh, issue that、uh, last time meaning want to have a discussion with Shui. One thirty-seven, right? Uh, two zero three. Oh yeah, two zero three. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Uh, I also saw another agenda item, but.、Uh, Uh, seems the time is、uh, October twenty twenties, not today. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, October twenty is Thursday. I was looking、yeah. at、uh, <laughs> that's why I was thinking: is it for today's agenda or for twentieth agenda? Uh, today's agenda. Yeah. It's like using verifier without a rep repository and、uh, and system versus user. Yeah, that is two zero three next release timeline. And also, ye, I think we need to go ahead and、uh, also look into the not done tab of、uh, release one and see that if the uh, you know uh, ownership is right there, like. Is there anything、uh, that is not anyone is working? Then we need to see who is working. So at least we know that each of the RC one item is assigned to somebody. That is、mm. uh, that is the other thing. And、uh, also the documentation we were talking to David. If he can touch base with Steve, if Nate is going to take it up. Uh, some of the documentation work、uh, that is tied to RC one, so that is、uh, mm -hmm. another item that、uh, we wanted to bring it up here. Yeah. Okay. Shivay,、uh, if you are talking,、uh, we cannot hear you. Uh, no, I'm just joining. <laughs> Thanks. Ah,、oh, okay. Hi. No worries. No worries. Hey, Pratish.、Uh, I think we had、uh, two items、uh, on the technical side of the discussion. Um,、uh, the two zero three and also the user verifier. Ah,、uh, sorry, using verifier without a repository. If you want to. If you sure, think... align with that, then we can go with the release one tasks. No,、yeah. oh, I can share the screen and we can go it one by one. I think this is the first one. Yeah. I think I agree there, but、uh, we just need a small refactoring and have a function, public function out there, which just takes in nature to store trust policy as an imprint perform verification and doesn't talks to the registry. Is that the ask?
Uh, uh, yes, I, I think if we uh, if we provide a quick uh, quick implementation, uh, that is, uh, I think that is what you just mentioned to expose a public function uh, for for the notation Go library to take signatures. I think we can do it a small refactoring. We can put in RC one and go ahead with that. Yeah, it's. I think we already have a function there. I think they already called it out there. We have a function there. We just need to make it public. Uh, Sh Shivay, do you have other comments besides make uh, make this uh, private function public? Anything else? Pritesh also mentioned some small refactoring. Maybe you can also share some uh, opinion, uh, opinions from your side. Um, so uh, I would suggest this do some uh, refactoring on the code so that we can maintain the code easier uh, in the future. Uh, exposing this method uh, may be quick and we can fix it, but it, I don't think it's good for long term. Yep, I agree there. We should have a we should do some refactoring, which takes bad generic arguments and things like that. But yes, I agree there. But I'm not suggesting to just make this public function like this. It looks like we have an agreement there. We can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So we can do it uh, in the RC1 scope, right? Yeah. Uh, OK, uh, maybe later when you, or I can, uh, maybe when uh, OK, it, it is you sharing the screen. OK. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, E and the British. So I uh, just want to confirm and clarify with uh, using verifier without repository. Uh, as we discussed in this issue, um, we find that it will relate to in an existing user story notation sign verify for offline scenarios. So uh, from my understanding, we will only provide uh, the capability, uh, the API capability in notation go first within RC1. And then um, we plan to do to design the CI capability after RC1. So signing an offline signing offline is completely different beast. We need to so like it's a different completely problem there because we need to locally generate the manifest and sign that. And we were yeah. able to find an yeah. easy way to do it. So I wouldn't suggest I wouldn't recommend to mix this uh, this issue with the uh, fifty user story fifteen. Yeah, so history 15 uh, will take a considerable amount of time and it's not in part of RC1. Yeah, makes sense. So I so from my understanding, we can do refactoring first and then we can provide the capability for uh, verifying without uh, connecting to the remote registry repository in notation code. Yes, I agree there. Cool. But I would still put put it to RC out of RC one to RC two. Let's not add that in RC one because we haven't heard the demand. Apart from ratify, we haven't heard any demand for that. And usually, who would be doing it? Usually, in the cases where we will be like verifying the signature, they will be running some kind of code so they can mostly integrate with our Go code. Mm -hmm. Or they, or they. I'm like, I'm, I don't. I don't see a need of any CLI. Do we have any specific use case where customer would need a CLI for sign, offline verification of signatures? Uh, I'm assuming you are. Uh, you are talking about the offline signing without uh, interacting with a repository. Uh, no verification signing. Yes, we agree that signing is required. Oh, verification. Yeah, yeah, it's signing. We agree that we recognize signing is a gap there. But we we were not able to solve the issue in reasonable time frame, so we have moved it out to RC two. And same for verification. Like for verification, we don't have we haven't seen the demand or any specific use case for offline verification. That's the reason we moved it to RC two. Okay, so so 
Go ahead. Sorry, it is someone else. Uh, so I think what we we are aligned is that we uh, we work on some refactoring on the notation Go uh, library and provide the capability to support uh, uh, verify uh, signature from library point of view for the CLI part and also this offline assign offline artifact we we still keep uh, them in the RC2 scope. That's correct. Yeah. Um, uh, let's move on to, to yeah. Uh, the next one is your book famous. We can move to the next one. Um, hey, this is Rakesh. I was able to read the first um issue on mm -hmm. the agenda. Uh, can we take a few minutes to discuss that? Uh, the 143 yeah. Rakesh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, I I just read the show here. Um, looks like they want to use server verification logic with the prefetched signatures, right? Um, with the existing current um, code base, they should be able to do it. Um, I don't know why we need to refactor the code. Um, currently the verifier constructed takes um, repository interface. Um, the developers can just um, have their own flavor of repository, which provides local signatures and should be able to verify those signatures. Uh, like on line number 14, you see the verifier object, right? Yeah, they can create a verifier with um, with a local repository and use the same logic. So uh, saying we have, oh. Yes, I know that the registry repository is an interface. That means uh, uh, you are asking uh, the Ratify uh, to implement a local repository. That's, uh, that's complex. Um, that means uh, if there are other applications, they also need to implement this uh, rigid repository. Um, I don't think that makes sense uh, because it's too complex to do so. Uh, why is that complex? Because they just need to like implement a struct that just returns whatever the prefetched values are, right? Um, I don't think that uh, so I think logic takes Rakesh, more than. I agree there. So about Rakesh saying that implement this with dummy values and just return the hard code con values which they already have. They don't need to implement the registry interface. This is they are making a registry interface and reading it from drop passing it from what they already have in memory. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, actually, accepting the interface is to support these kind of use cases. Um, the repository can be in any form, right? The file system repository or a network repository or anything. Um, so their use case um, should be able to use the interface functionality. Shiva. Uh, I mean, uh, it's hackable, but I don't think it's a good design to have such uh, architecture. Um, like if you support another public function, it's kind of like complicating the interface of verifier, right? Now the reader of the, our documentation need to figure out when to use what uh, for like custom use cases like ratify. I think it is perfectly fine to like re-implement the interface. May I ask how many interfaces we are asking them to implement? One. Just one. Just the one. Um, which, no, that's two, right? Uh, so you have a repository type as well as a signature repository yep. type. Yep. Uh, 
and uh, put signature manifest and things like that are going to be no ops, right? Yep. So let me just verify that quickly here. Yeah, it looks like we don't yeah, need to In the verification, list, there is no write calls. Yeah, we do resolve, list signature manifest, and get blob. Uh, yeah, so we have kind of mixed up the put blob. Put blob is actually a write path, which I don't see a verifier should actually even have access to. So it almost seems like this interface needs to be split again, or we are asking a client to implement a dummy put blob, even though they never have to do a, a write. Is, is, there needs to be cleaning either on either side is how I'm reading it. Is that accurate or? Uh, repository is the top level interface, right? Uh, I don't think we need a read repository and a write repository interfaces. Um, so the entire core piece of notation uses this repository interface. Um, okay. I think it's fine for Ratify to like implement these methods and some of those methods can be like no op. Yes, I'm just curious about the signature repository within that uh, interface type. Is that important? Do they have to implement that also? It yeah. has uh, get blob and list signature manifest, right? Those need to be implemented. We're ignoring the put signature manifest, the third method. I want to probably like ask about that specific method. Um, so in Golang, um, the implementations can be arbitrary. Like as long as you are providing a struct with the needed methods like get blob, list signature manifest and resolve. Um, wait, um, we are asking for the repository interface, right? In verify, so Correct. all the methods need to be implemented. Yeah. Correct. So, so that's what I'm I'm trying to ask from a from an interface standpoint we are asking somebody to implement a repository interface but indirectly we are also asking them to implement a no op put signature manifest which should be there or shouldn't be there can we clean this up or can we have it a little bit more clear as to how consumers of this need to be doing i think the point is we want to step away from exposing yet another function but it doesn't mean that this interface is as is cleaner in any form uh there are pros and cons to both. So let's kind of at least call out that if this is the pattern we got to go, then we have to tell people you have to implement a no op method or only implement these two methods. Um, the, the, the logic is a little, I'm saying that there, there's, there's a little bit of a trade off you're doing in either place. Yeah, we can take this discussion, um, the issue. I think we can just comment it out and if there is a position, we can take it back. Like we can revisit this. Like you can add a comment to the issue if that works for Ratify, it's good. Yeah. Sounds good. Rakesh, so you will be adding an example there in the issue. Yes. Cool, cool. Sounds good, okay. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, any other questions on this one? Or we can move to the next one. Cool. Let's move to the next one then. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so I think the issue is more about just some, just correct me if I'm wrong. The issue is basically we have multiple conflicts which can be defined at both user level and at the system level. And because of that, now we have a problem that which one should take precedence over other, or it should be union of some or intersection of, like it should be union of some or which one should take precedence over other. I think we can spend two minutes just to go over a question and then after, to go over the issue and then after that we can start discussion. Let me please start on the chat.
So Sajay, in this case here, do you believe the pattern here is somebody's trying to override from a security point of view with the system settings, or is it the case of the default is the system and the user settings are the customization? I plead the fifth. Yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> Okay, it's, I don't know. I, okay, but more on a, uh, on, on a serious note, I don't know why we consider user credentials or user settings any less secure than uh, system settings um, because in the context of anything that's running, um, different users have different access here. What is the current permission model for notation? Notation doesn't have a permission model is what my understanding is. Yep, it doesn't have. The way you would normally think of this is that the system settings are broad. The user settings are specific. So the user settings should override here. Right, that's what I was also of the opinion because if you put an SSH key into the user setting, it really doesn't matter what keys are configured at the system level, right? You you take what the user specifies within that narrow scope. So Shiva, do you see any holes in that? Um, no, you're running this as a user proc exe anyway, uh, or within the user process space. So what it has access to is a process isolation boundary concept, not a not what file system specification that we use here. Also, if someone is using notation as a user, then they have a better chance of just replacing the notation with dummy client and make everything return zero to the success, basically. So are you saying that you want notation to run as, as a no, system? Like, that's what I'm saying. No, I'm like, I, I agree with you. I'm just trying to understand what the set, set vector is here. Oh. It's like, if user is compromised, if the user file system is compromised, yeah, we don't matter. have to work. Yeah. So what is the, uh, sorry, but that, asking but the, the reverse of that, but the reverse of that is, it's also weird, which is you're saying, Hey, user settings can't be set if the system decides to override. So, so that's a, that's a usability problem we are solving here. Like I'm so like I want to tackle this first from security perspective. What we're trying to solve, then it's the usability problem we have here. So, so what is the issue? I'm I'm really sorry. I have no clue of how this issue even started. Okay. So initially, uh, I think we had a directory structure. In directory directory structure, we defined two two parts where user can put the configs, like even trust store, trust policy, uh, signing key list config, and things like that. Uh, so now, now the question was like, if we can, if config can be presented to location, which one takes the precedence over the, which one takes the priority? Now, after that, the issue got uh, like evolved. Let's say like, do we want to yeah, even support union of the configs? Like for example, trust store, trust store. If I, I like, if system level trust store uh, exists, then do we want to combine it with the user level trust store or not? And which becomes complicated. That's the, that's how this yeah. issue reached this state. And like initially, it was like the precedence was because like we thought about security. But when I was thinking more about, it, I was like, I'm not sure if the, it provides us any better security guarantees. Uh, right. So the so the problem is how you resolve which config to kind of pick, right? I think that's what it's kind of boiling down to. Yes. Yeah. That's the default uh, config, which which is the one that needs to be selected. So what we discussed in one of the meeting is uh, if the user config is not being specified and only the system, then you extract whatever is in the system. If user config is specified, then override with the user config. But there came another discussion telling that the system config or the directory structure is more secure. The why is not very, very defined. Why is it more secure versus user? Do we well, the do we the definition I mean, is <laughs> the only reason that it would be secure is because you're arguing that system administrators are fewer and higher vetted than the user 
right. control of their own stuff. Right. <laughs> but that's still pretty pretty weak if they want to override something. <coughs> Is it just about calling out what the attack vectors are right now? Like based mm -hmm. on attack vector, we can just like it's like we I want to take a step back and like do we need the two policies at all? Do we not at system level and user level? Before we even go there, do we need do we have a use case where we need both the policies? Or do we have a use case where someone will do system level and we have a use case where we need user level? If we don't I, need that both policies, then yeah. Can can we think of it? I mean, here's my thinking at a higher at a higher level. We always end up going back to user level scope. Like say, for example, we want to not go to root, we don't want to do anything at system level, right? I think for RC1 timeframe, don't honor anything system level, everything is user mode, and we can introduce a system level concept once we are comfortable with user level, and it can default or fall back to system level or whatnot, but I still think you have to, my vote would be to keep everything user level for now so that you don't have to worry about what you say, ACLs and C group permissions and all those kind of things at this point. Unless there's other folks who want system level configuration, is there anybody asking for that? The only advantage of system level configuration is I can set broad policy and then allow users to set up and they only have to do the minimum. Yeah, that's from Zipity's perspective. It's like if I have organization, I can define like common policies and distribute all across the system using a one system level credentials. That's the only use case I can think of, but yeah. But then you don't have security gate checks to not override it also, because you can have notation run as your user. And yeah. Then it, uh, unless you can tell notation to run at a level that would prevent. The, yeah. I agree with that. It was most from it was more from a perspective how like active directory credentials or anything are distributed to the organization right now. So yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't have a specific use case here. Shiva? Uh, yeah. Uh no, uh so uh so I'll have list of three scenarios on the top. So uh you can go through one by one and uh, uh, for the first of two, we don't need system levels, uh, but for the third one, uh, a system level might be okay. Yeah. Yes. So on the third one, usually you will run that CICD machine or production server with some user, not as root. And if that user is compromised, it doesn't provide me any additional security guarantees. I agree. It might be handy from conflict distribution perspective, but not from security perspective. So are we telling Pratesh, are we telling we need to identify what are the adversaries here and then we need to plan the mitigation at the, uh, no, we are talking about, the system level and the user no, we, level, right? No, we, are debating, we are taking a step back and seeing where, what's the use case where we will need the system level. So we are trying to find the use case where do we where actually system level conflict would be useful. Because what I'm thinking is even at the system level, I think we have narrowed down to administration administrator, but even then there can be an adversary over no, there. And no, we no, no, we are we are saying do we even need system level credential? Does having a system level conflict provides us any security benefit? That's what that's where I'm going. Like even even though we narrowed down to the security benefits at the system level, are we failing to identify any adversary and the mitigation plan uh, around that, right? I, I, I'm just bringing that. Yeah. <coughs> Admin users versus root users are different, isn't it? Usually admin can assume root rows, that's what I'm assuming here, but yeah. Probably, but if you go to the uh, if you go to the operating system level, root users will be one or two, right? Admins can be multiple. At least that's what I've seen. So they those two are also two different group privileges. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with that. But like the here, I'm questioning the premise is how which is secure. Because hmm. if you're running. 
-hmm. can organizations have notation installed at system level and use it from there yeah but if you are running a some process which calls notation at system level if if the user is compromised why is not that process compromised like i'm asking like can users do everything at system level not involving users at all yeah but it's usually not good a good practice to run your services at system user at a system level or sub admin level yeah, no kidding like you never yeah, run not running service. the service but probably just verifying the containers like there can be a daemon process running at system level using system level install notation uh, so there is a bigger right? actually yes. this is exactly why i was saying that i don't think the scenario or the use case for the system running is clear enough like if we if exactly what you're describing is what i was worried about we would end up designing how to run notation at a system level right now notation scope is running only at user level so if we want to do that we should probably call out the use case how, describe how a daemon might be installed describe the c group permissions that the daemon will have because you end up with literally like running docker again right like docker runs on its own c group its own process space you cannot uh, affect the file system and it runs within its scope so we have to maybe uh define that entire set which is to me is a is a bigger chunk for at least this milestone but it's worth having a conversation so don't get me wrong here but can we yeah, like if there is no ask from customers at the moment i don't think we need to discuss have a discussion to have like system level config i was just thinking if that is a use case we may want to support if no customer is asking then maybe it's too early to discuss that so we can punt that to later maybe just support user level config at this point yeah i agree yeah works for me uh so i think we based on the discussion i think we are still we have still not finalized whether system level is needed but the discussion itself we are moving to rc2 is that true Uh, so can you um, of you uh, just comment in this issue so just write down what what we have discussed <laughs> thanks yeah. thanks for this i will do that yeah uh, is there any development work um to just support user users i think we have to remove piece some piece of code from there but i don't think much I think she we can comment more on that. I think uh Pano was question again. Uh what is the state of the current code? Um do we need to um put any effort to support only um user level config? Uh so current code uh, we support both levels and a uh, union level. Um uh, we can configure the code to just use a user level okay we may want to track that work somewhere uh, i will add a dvd here i'm just add it offline um, so do we create a new issue for that uh, yeah i will do it offline i will create a new okay. issue and change it everything there let uh Should we move to the next next item on the agenda? Data issues. Okay, yeah. Why do you want to talk about this? Yeah, this is the one. If you, uh, Pritesh, if you can go to the uh, RC one not done tab in the notary planning. I think this is where we wanted to make sure that. Sure. so um uh, this is uh, this is where we have all the open 
uh, tasks for uh, RC1. We have around 44 issues here. Uh, some of it is, uh, as uh, we discussed in the last meeting, is all documentation related to Nate. Uh, it was in Nate's name, and uh, we just uh, spoke to David uh, if he can uh, talk to Steve because he was the one who was uh, coordinating with Nate. So that part of it, sorry. Sir, what was the ask there? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This this is about the documentation uh, stuff that oh, yeah. we discussed in the last meeting. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I think so. I did speak with Pink Steve, um, and uh, he connected me with Nate. Um, and Nate is open to help, but he's pretty busy, like re relating to coupon. I think the thing that we need is, um, as you as you saw, I created a doc, an issue for um, an art, like what changes we need for RC one for mm -hmm. notation. And so I think we just need to put more detail in there. I just kind of quickly like whipped up something. Um, but I but I think we need a little more, we need to fill that in a bit more and agree upon what what else, what are the items that we need help with. Um, and once we have, we feel good about that, then I think I can, I, I could ping um, Nate more specifically and say, hey, um, what of this can, can you help with? Um, so, so that's where we're at on that. So okay. that uh, if you, I can paste the link to the issue if you give me a second. A second. Sure, thank you. That's a good progress, David. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think um, this. Many and uh, excuse me, uh, Benny and uh, David, I am guessing you are talking about the notary documentation and asking for resources and support from CNCF, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, from my experience, I know uh, CNCF is provide is has provided a uh, public website. Um, maybe we can call it ticket website, which is uh, used to provide uh, prov uh, provide our CNCF maintainers to ask for resource support. Uh, I can sh share my screen or showcase the link here, and I think we can raise a ticket uh, at this. To, uh, at this portal, at this platform. So may I quickly share my desktop? Or when you can help us to open that link as well. Hey, please feel free to share, yeah. I have stopped the screen sharing. Okay, so I will quickly share my desktop and uh, provide oh, my suggestion. Crazy. PNCF service desk, is it? Okay. And about this portal. I slowed the day. Sorry about that. Let me know if you if anyone can see, see my screen. <clears throat> Not yet. Not yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys can see uh, this page, CNCF Service Desk, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, if we want to ask support from CNCF, uh, especially for technical docs, I think we can raise a ticket uh, in this portal and uh, uh, choose this option for technical docs. And uh, they also provide other um, services like legal consulting, certification, marketing, and uh, technical support. Uh, yeah, I think we can try to raise a ticket from uh, this portal. And then I, I guess since it might assign uh, another resource for us, Nate might be easy for other projects. Not sure, but we can try to uh, raise ticket here. And uh, Notary is a CNCF incubating project. So I think CNCF has, uh, CNCF is, uh, what, what, when CNCF is able to provide uh, these resources for us. Yeah, I think it's a good, I mean, I think it's a good route to go. Um, I, I would just say like, we should lock down on um, what's, prior, what's like the remaining priorities on the Notary web, website. Read the issue, and then we can reach out to Nate 
And if he doesn't have bandwidth, then we could file that issue um, to, to have help in those specific areas. Yeah. Uh, have we ever uh, connect with Nate before and contact his time yeah. capacity? Yeah, he's the one who, if you look on there, Nate's the one, I mean, uh, Sajid linked. <laughs> link to it but he he's the one who created the initial website and you can see he's got all the issues mainly are him and a lot of the issues are having been cleaned up since he initially did work so <clears throat> i really feel like it's back on us um to kind of go through the backlog clean up the issues um you know at a bare minimum like update the actual issue that i link to in the everyone in the chat for rc1 so that we you know we actually um have like like practical like tasks for him or someone else to accomplish uh, in, in a list of priority. I know I know that um, Zach did a lot uh, based on the document that you and, and you put together, which is good, but I don't mm -hmm. think we're not quite, you know, we're not quite there. Um, obviously, there's still there's still more to go. And I just think we need a, we need a, a bit more um, detail on the things we want done, uh, as well as, like I said, to clean up the backlog from the website. I think it would be great. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see David's uh, issue is just uh, posted in the chat. So that means we need to uh, like uh, have have a list of documents we want to do for RC one, right? And we maybe we need to also um, create some documents by by ourselves. Then ask Nate or other people to help to to polish it and to to put to the website, right? So. Yeah. So that means we, we needed to have have that content have the list uh, ready firstly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I th I think the I think that the the tasks of just moving content around, um, you know, that's there's still a bit to do there um, because we do at this point after Zach's um, PR we have docs in two places. You know, we have stuff in the the notary project notary project, and we have a copy of it on the website. Um, and I know, like, for instance, one of the things that we, we merged into the website is the key revocation spec, of which we know is not like the final, right, and where we want. And so we, um, right, like, we should, <laughs> we should update that, we should, you know, get rid of the old one and, and like, kind of, you know, there's still a lot of house, like, work cleaning to do. But if, if there's no issue filed, like, somebody coming in like, back again, like Nate, who hasn't touched it in, like, two years, you know, he's not going to, He's not going to know what to do, and and all the issue. I think most of the issues that he has up there are, they either need to be closed or, you know, like cleaned up or 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 whatever. Some of the stuff he has valid questions that that are there, but but somebody needs to to go through it. Yeah, I see that issue. Doc documentation updates desired for RC one release. Yeah, and that's not com complete. I mean, that's it, just, it was like I said, it was just a quick, just a, just a quick uh, off the hip. Um, Maybe we can do the documentation in parallel. We can provide some initial content from our uh, PM site, and uh, we can also ask for uh, resources, support from CNCF and maybe the community, yeah. Yeah, I think we can also ask for Zach's help uh, within a, the upcoming weeks. Yeah. So, Samir, you have your, your hand up. Yeah, I was listening in about the documentation needs and what's outstanding. Uh, what's a good working backwards date to set for RC1? Assuming that some documentation is mandatory and some is optional that we can even do after RC1. I'm making some broad assumptions here, but are we at a good point you know, with all the work in front of us to project a date? What is needed for us to project a date? Like so I, I think I, that was, yeah, I think that's where we, you know, we were gonna try and go through the, the backlog, right? And flush that out, yeah. I'm not sure. 
we were going to try and do that on today's call, right? Um, but I think that's where we, we need a time to, to probably sync. Um, that's to, right. To get more detail. Samira, then we talked about that on Thursday. And I don't think we've just, we have, we just haven't, and it's actually in the meeting notes, but I, don't, I just don't think we've, we've actually set that meeting yet to answer that yeah. question. No, I think that's fair. I did look at all the open items for RC1, and I believe British put a call out to assign any open items if people are working on it. But when I looked at it, I think all items are mostly assigned only with a handful remaining. Uh, so if, if we all can take an action to give an update on by when we think that item will be complete, we can project a date. If we just bring up notary project uh, planning board, David, if you don't mind bringing it up or Bonnie, if you wanna bring it up, we can quickly have a look at that. And I think it will help before the holidays, before we know it, the holidays will be here, right? So, and nothing happens in December. So I'm just trying to see if um, we have a working backwards date before the holiday season gets here. I think from what I see, there's nothing blocking us. Unless somebody knows something that I don't know, but just uh, maybe I'm the optimist here after uh, looking at all the work remaining. Vani, are you planning to bring up the notary planning board? I can do it. I have thoughts. Um, um, Sorry, I'm hijacking the meeting, but I thought uh, unless we look at who has what, it will be harder to do it. Okay, let me bring it up. Um, sorry, Samir, I was just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let me bring it up. Uh, I didn't see very many. Maybe if Steve were here and I'm channelizing Steve, Steve will say, what's stopping us? <laughs> so I, I will say, uh, let's find out what's stopping us. And uh, we can go through that quickly in this meeting if anybody sees any big work item remaining here. Okay, I'm about to share my screen, share screen. Where is that no tree planning? Okay, here's the... Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Oh, yes, some we can see. Uh, okay, I'm ignoring Alpha 4, I'm ignoring Alpha 5, I'm ignoring Discuss because I think we have looked at it future. In RC1, when I look at it, I see all the items in progress with only a handful remaining, which are mainly <laughs> documentation links. Everything is in progress or, okay, there's a couple of to-dos here, uh, but most things have an assigned owner to it. So, if we can just project a date here, the start and end date here, I think we can quickly see by when we'll be done. If we can do it by Thursday meeting, that would be great. And this, for any item, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So that's Sorry. it, I think I'm preaching to the core here, like I'm open to ideas how we can work to project a date here. Uh, any maybe, ideas? Uh, yeah, I have suggested maybe we can uh, predict the work from the user story point of view because currently we, we have several RC1 user stories, right? But uh, uh, it will actually, uh, some of this user story cover several issues you just see, uh, you just showed in, in the not done. Uh, for example, the sign experience, uh, I have completed this uh, CR spec, then there will be some implementation work and for the verify, plugging list uh, uh, those once those uh, spec emerge there will be some implementation work but that uh, uh, group of issues uh, I think belong to uh, certain user story released here so I would suggest that we can uh, maybe select some other issue not covered by user story yet for example the debug option we can create an issue for that debug option issue uh, and also, uh, I remember there is end-to-end uh, -end testing framework, right? We want to have that uh, testing framework into the as one. We can create another uh, user story. So with user story, we, we have all the scopes. Then we, we can do the cost estimation based, based on the user story. But the end-to-end -end oh. testing, right? Uh, that is something is an issue, but is not tied to any story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would suggest that we 
because story is from the high level and the issue uh, because uh, everyone can uh, create issues so so this list will will get flushed out but if we have the key user story for us when anchored in in that uh, board then we will for sure we, we will know what we are going to achieve and we can uh, make this uh, cost estimation uh, against this uh, user stories yeah i think that's fair we can definitely go down that route i will just say to minimize the overhead of creating a user story for something which is just an issue i will say we we all make a pass at the user stories okay so let's do this let's see if the user stories are correctly assigned uh, i think at this point ye um you can look at these user stories and say at a high level these user stories are correctly assigned if assuming they are then you can make a quick determination which one of these user stories relate to uh, rc1 not done and then you will anyways have to look at this data to figure out how much work is remaining for the user stories let's assume we do that um david i think you and i can just take a swag at how much work will be in the documentation. So anything which is documentation related, we can take a swag at it. And I think if you're okay, some documentation will be mandatory, some can be optional, which can come even after RC1. I'm thinking aloud here. So user stories will cover the bulk of these issues, then there'll be documentation, and then the debug option and end to end CLI, we can just write that work, work here, yay. So I'm saying what you are saying, but I'm saying let's just minimize creating more user stories on for any big item. Let's just put that work estimate here itself. Okay, you mean for the issues not covered by the user story yet, yeah. we can yeah. uh, put the estimation for that issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that we we have the uh, cost estimation for the user story plus uh, the issues list in this uh, board, right? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think between now and Thursday morning, if you're able to do that, uh, then we will have a good working backwards date of what's possible. And then uh, we can have a discussion with the maintainers if we need more people or this is, or the velocity we are on is fine. We can make the decision then. Okay. Uh, David, I, uh, going back to you on the documentation, I'm, I'm taking an estimate here that some of the documentation can come later. I do not, this is my first open source project. So can you some guidance if uh, some of the documentation can indeed come later? Yeah, no, I think, I think I mean, yeah, some of it can come later, like I said, but I, I really think uh, that, I mean, you or Vanny or really anybody could just take a pass at looking at what, what the issues are there in the documentation website repo and, you know, just, just kind of, backlog triaging them and then um, really just thinking, you know, updating that one issue on the RC1 and what's kind of bare minimum that we want people to have as a, as a, as a decent experience, you know, uh, for, for just the, the initial release candidate. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any real like rocket science here. It's just, you know, trying to think about like what what do we want people to to have as the as the default we're we're already a lot better than we were before with the with the overhaul that um, Zach did but it's it's yeah i mean like okay. like the links that i had the links that i had right for instance like there's nothing there you go to a link there's nothing there right like that's obvious that it's not a very good experience <laughs> someone goes to an how to and there's nothing there right <laughs> so so it's so then it's like, well, do we want to remove that or do we want to add an article there? You know, it just yeah. needs more thought behind it, right? And and yeah. I yeah. yeah. Okay. I just add my add my con comment in that issue, David. Okay. Um okay, so I think uh, if we don't have any other, you know, I mean, we only have five minutes left. Uh, so I, I think um, this RC, like we talked a little bit, you talked a little bit before I joined about the, the local signing experience. Um, I, I do think 
that's pretty important to have that not significantly change um, because there's, I mean, yeah, that's specific to ratify, but in general, you know, if, if we're really trying to have something that doesn't require a, a provider's plugin, a Azure, a AWS or otherwise, um, you know, we should be able to give people at, if we're really saying RC is a production ready thing, um, we really, I think should have something that, uh, you know, people could do lo local signing with um, and, and that be, you know, what they, what they move forward with. I, and I know it's, I know it's, it's a, it's a significant change in scope, but I mean, without, without that, then you really can't do like, for instance, um, let's say si signing something like in, in an open source GitHub repository right. without, without a provider set up, right? So we do already have a way we are just calling it testing. The reason which you, the reason uh, we went this way because the earlier encryption format for for like I think securing the private keys is deprecated and there is no good substitute for that. So the only path forward which I see is either have a custom format there or support the deprecated, have a custom format and which doesn't have cost cross compatibility with any other, other tool out there or support the deprecated format and have the cross compatibility with other tools. Um, is that really, the, that's there's nothing's changed? Cause I know that was the blocker from quite a while back, right? This, this is the blocker. Like there are only two options which we were able to figure out and we were like, okay, let's not decide on it. We will decide on our state too. That was our call out with we made at that time. Okay. And there's, that means so nothing's changed since then and we're still stuck with those two options. Yep. Okay. We might want to reanalyze this and see what uh, what other tools or what other, other projects are doing because I'm not sure if there's like any update out there in the industry in last two to three, four months. I haven't followed up on that. So yeah. Do we have do we have those two choices like documented somewhere? Because I know we've talked about them, but I don't remember seeing them like in anything written, like on a hack and D or an issue. Maybe I missed it, but it's been yeah. Uh, I don't have it out of like I don't have it handy, but even if it's there. Yeah, because I because I think um I think Shiva took a stab at that one initially, researching about the formats and everything. Yeah, just the pros, the cons, the trade-offs, and then maybe like there's because like, there's actually some other, you know, we could pull in some outside, you know, crypto type people to just see, you know what maybe other things we're not thinking of. Um, but without without that detail, I think um, it's gonna be a little harder to, to pull in outside support. I mean, I don't, I don't think it needs to be like extremely complicated, but just, just basically writing out the things you mentioned with links to the challenge with those things, the uns, you know, the uns, okay, where does it show it's unsupported? Where's the, you know, where's the, the issue with that approach, right? I, yeah, I can take a step, but I am only starting Thursday. That's the only problem okay. I have. Like, like I won't be there for almost a week and a half. Okay. Yeah, uh, she, stab, but... yeah she was still on the call or did he drop? Oh, she was still there. She would, did you, um, did you, did you ever write something up with those like approaches ever or not yet? Uh, pardon, uh, I, I lost context. What was the question? So relating to the, there's like for the local, the offline local signing experience, um, there, there's kind of two approaches that Pratesh mentioned and there's like, I guess some challenges with both of the approaches, uh, which is, I just was asking if that is documented anywhere, the details of those challenges with both of those approaches that's been blocking us for, for ever, well, still is blocking us now on this one moving forward. 
Sure. Sure. Pratesh, do you want to illustrate again or Sachi, did you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, there are two parts here. One is the content being local. The second one is the key being local, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, content being local is not a blocker, right? Nope. Okay, so it's only about key being local at this point in time. Uh, yes. And uh, and there's a question about local keys. So uh, uh, here we define local keys means the notation will read the key directly. But there's an, an another local key scenario that is uh, there's a plugin, then that plugin reads the local key. So uh, in that scenario, we consider that as a remote scenario, although it's local key. Uh, I, I think what uh, what uh, David is pointing out is like first like first class support for local keys in notation itself, not as a plugin. Yeah. So right now we have yeah. like test certificate which is local key. Uh, David is saying, can we support local key? And last uh, time I remember, I'm 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 reading this as all these discussions are because notation doesn't have a library to read a file that is password encrypted, right? That's correct, yep. Can we, I mean, can we skirt around that and say that you need to somehow load this into an environment variable or process and that's out of scope of notation? Like OpenSSL can read it and dump it into an environment variable and we can use it. And the tooling is up to the client to pick the correct tooling because we don't have a compliant way to do it. So, Loading keys is, is a customer problem at this point in time. It's not the best experience, but I don't see how we can get around this if we don't have any other option. That's why I was asking Shui on the side, like what's the limitation? Is it libraries? Uh, is it just about getting the key access or can we maybe just think outside the box? So I was thinking like there can be two solutions. One is use the deprecated method, which is used by OpenSSL and other tools out there. And we have like cross compatibility there. Like you can, although it's not the best solution, but then again, keeping keys on disk is not a secure solution. Agreed. So I'm like not can, yeah, yeah. So we can we can support a dep. Like there are two. I have two options there. Like either support a deprecated logic, like which is already a deprecated library. And use that for signing, and we will have cross compatibility with OpenSSL and other tools out there. The second one we can do is we can roll out our custom format or our custom encryption scheme and secure with that. So basically, we will say, but then the problem with the second approach is you'll have to expose much more functionality like sign keys, decrypt keys, and things like that, helper functions out there. And you're literally but, like, making another tool right at that point. In time. That's why I was saying, like, can we take the keys dynamically at process time um, and leave it to the user as, okay, this is this is how it is. It's not a super secure scenario. So you're responsible for your security boundaries and attack vectors and how you get the password in. But notation process is running with your user account that you have to somehow provide through anonymous variables so or something. That's similar as that of pointing to an unencrypted, unencrypted key on the host. It's like, okay, now you need to secure really, the memory really. compared to disk. Uh, right, but your you uh, notation itself has no way to kind of like read the password key or has no vulnerability in the code path that it's using to get the key. It's up to the user of how they have hydrated that, right? True, but isn't it the same as reading the key on the host, which is unencrypted? Like, I mean, it's just securing a memory as compared to disk. I agree, it's much more difficult to uh, attack vector there on the memory as compared to disk. But we are just moving from disk to memory. Oh, you don't even want to, so you don't even want to get the key into memory with, and go only through like, crypto at that point. Yeah, if we can do that, like that's the ideal behind I, the I library. See what you're I see what you're saying. Like at the end, only where you are signing, you just decrypt, decrypt the key, and only a small component piece of code has access to it. Okay. So all, yeah, I mean, we can, someone can go and look into it again if there is anything out there in last three, four months. I'm not sure. I haven't been following up on that. Or we can ask Roy. I think Roy did some digging on that around a couple of months back. Yeah, otherwise you have to integrate with something like, I don't know, it's almost like GPGP Armor and all those kind of things, like, like App Locker yeah. and stuff like that, or Keychain and different integration points. So I think Okay, so 
what's what do others think at this point like is this important well i mean there's all the all the scenarios that are mentioned there in the offline user story that just they're they're not they're not doable um like i mean i, I land the in the user story the user notation sign verify offline local uh it it has a list there um if <laughs> we yeah i mean I, I think it's a pretty, pretty important thing um, for, for all the scenarios that it enables. Not just Rafi. <laughs> Rafi is the small, small part of the bigger picture. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to be sorry for saying this, but maybe the deprecated method might seem the most reasonable. Because con content signing, obvious content being offline is not the problem. It's it's doable, right? We have built tools and whatnot. Uh, but keys being offline, we don't have any other solution at this point. Well, uh, well, we can still use a local plugin <laughs> to read local keys. Oh, and how do you what? Who would write the local plugin? And like, what is the mechanism for that? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so you, uh, basically, um, you can write a local plugin that invokes other libraries to, uh, I mean, compliant libraries to read those keys on the disk or in the memory. Okay. I mean, yeah. Then someone need to install plugin also. That's like, like it was like we, I think David was talking about like notation itself supports that use case. You don't have to download any other plugin. We can do this in iterations. I think if you can pull yeah. it as a plan, then we can bring it into the notation library after discussing the security I mean, implications of that, right? It's the same. The security implication of writing a plugin is same, just that you're offloading it to plugin now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, wor I mean, worst case is the plugin can be written in a language that is compliant if that is the worst, if at all you uh, want to no, do. No, I think it's not about compliant. The underlying specification is broken. That's what happened. The library, it's more about the libraries. It's not about a library being not compliant and link specification, which was used to encrypt and decrypt is broken or something like that. I it's see. no longer safe. I would put it like that. So then, not, then let the patient give a big, big warning saying that please don't use this, but. So Golang has put the functions deprecated. Uh, yeah. That's the so, yeah. So it, it, it's because it's the uh, old specification. If there's a, a, a newer specification, that's still okay. I agree. If we can find a new one, then yes, implementation for that. Yeah, may maybe we can open an issue, warn that local keys are not the way that it should be done, uh, but it is still supported. I, I don't see any other way of making this happen. Uh, wants and to it, make it in yeah, and also it's about the, the attack vectors and the, uh, how the threat model uh, is defined. So in some scenario, uh, local environment are safe, are, are supposed to be safe. And uh, uh, in some scenario, okay, uh, the local uh, environment is not supposed to be safe. So different companies or organizations have their own uh, threat model. So it, it depends on the users. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, in, in the AdGraft environment, we know that talking or calling outside is probably worse than anything that you can do, right? So I think there it is isolated and you have full control and you can literally unplug the machine and do what you want to. Um, I think okay. we can take an extra item here that someone can write one like a issue and just pros and cons of all the approach and rough estimate for that, that would be helpful. I think we keep on iterating the same question again and again. Yeah, sure, this is a, you picked us up already. 15, right? Yeah, I do remember Shiva working on it and I think Roy was helping him. That's what I remember. Yeah. And and this one is for uh sign local content. It's not a sign use a local key, right? It's uh, that's what I was asking. Both have been mixed up in the same issue. It's one big issue that handles local content as well as local signing. I mean local key. I would say it's actually two separate things. You should be able to sign local content with a remote key 
but the the user story is everything is local i think that's how it's been titled yeah uh, and also when we say a remote key it's not saying that the key is in the remote it is using a plugin the plugin can read a, a real remote key or a local key Agreed. I, mean, um, I think the action item here is just to probably update this issue with what, what we need to do. Maybe split up this issue as uh, create, like, I think there are two issues already on this, right? There's 182, which is about local storage. And the, yeah. there's 44, which is about local key. Uh, yeah. And maybe we need I, to add them separately. And I think I, uh, we, stop, uh, we should stop saying local key and remote key. And okay. we should say something like plugin signing and uh, native signing, <laughs> something like sure, that. Sure, sure. I mean, just update the issue. I think that issue has become a little stale now. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I know we're, I know we're over, but yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.